The sea and the cliffs have a turbulent love-hate relationship of destruction and life. They seem to be on the brink of war. The sea attacks the rocks of the cliffs, and they withstand the beating like enormous stone walls. In part, this is true, but their relationship is much more intimate and fruitful than it may appear. They are like massive tenement buildings with sea views. For many creatures, there is no better place than the cliffs. The sea shapes the cliffs, and it reaches into every crevice. The cliffs, on the other hand, extend below the breaking waves and provide refuge for a multitude of creatures. From its higher areas to the submerged rocks, the cliffs are locked in a continual struggle to be able to stay here. Seabirds are the noisiest neighbors. Some of these colonies have millions of individuals. Unlike terrestrial birds, the vast majority of species that depend on the sea, more than 90%, are colonial. And many of them live on the cliffs. Yellow-legged gulls are a good example. Life in a colony has its pros and cons. The main problem is the lack of space. There is little space on sea cliffs to build a nest. The vast colonies of seagulls have thousands of couples which hide their nests and chicks amid the coastal vegetation to prevent predators from finding them easily. Another safety measure is the camouflage outfit of the chicks, which have mimetic downy feathers so that they can hide among the plants.
everything they need can be found close to the colony. Rain often accumulates in the cracks in the cliff rocks, temporarily forming freshwater pools. Water gushes up from little springs, providing enough for the whole year. As for food, seagulls use every means possible to make the most of what the coast offers them. It is not uncommon to see them picking over flotsam left by the waves, catching small animals, or gathering scraps dragged up by the sea. The yellow-footed booby is more demanding than the seagulls when it comes to founding a colony, and with good reason. During the mating season, they are extremely vulnerable. While they incubate their eggs, and when their chicks are still helpless, they need a safe place to stay, and they know where to find it. For boobies, the sea and small rocky islands are the best bodyguards. The proof is that both its chicks and its eggs are white, because although they attract attention, they do not have any enemies to protect themselves from. Both parents take turns incubating. They keep the eggs warm by wrapping their webbed feet around them. The membranes of their feet act like little heaters thanks to the high number of capillaries that pass through them. The colony of boobies is very dense and the nests are packed tightly next to one another. Fights between tenants are not uncommon. With such sharp beaks, it's better to keep aggression in check. That's why fights are just playful squabbles. The members of each couple are extremely friendly with each other. Before they build a nest, they exchange lover's gifts. These pretty offerings reinforce the bond between the two. Mm -hmm. 
Lizards have also found their place on the cliffs. They have a very different relationship with the coast, since they are true castaways stranded on the islands, islets, and rocky cliffs. They are like little fortresses surrounded by a moat that cannot be crossed. The result of this isolation is the creation of a multitude of different breeds and new species, such as the lizards of the Canary Islands or the Balearic Islands, which vary greatly in shape and color from one island to another, although they are very close to one another. The inaccessibility of some cliffs has saved some of these species from extinction by taking them out of the way of aggressive invaders such as rats, cats, or humans. A good example of the protection offered by this ecosystem is the astonishing population density of the Balearic lizard on some islands. With more than 32,000 individuals per hectare, it has the highest known density of all reptiles in the temperate region. In addition to highly populated colonies of birds and islands teeming with lizards, there is dense and very life below the breakers. But how can there be life in such a rough environment? In the shallows of the cliffs, marine life tends to be very rich. Currents bring in dense clouds of nutrients, which attract enormous shoals of fish. These shoals provide food for some very unusual predators. Each day, brown pelicans circle effortlessly around 150 kilometers of coastline in search of food. Once they spot a shoal of fish, the feasting begins. The brown pelican is the only member of its family that is a plunge diver. It is a kamikaze that shoots down like an arrow every time it sees a fish.
Its laborious way of fishing is complicated by the fact that the pouch of the pelican can hold up to three liters of water. And to swallow its catch, it must use every last drop. Sea lions are also aware of the risks of coastal waters. They have the lowest apartment in the cliff tenement building. Their bustling colonies perch on the rocks that overlook the breakers. There, they bask in the sun, rest, and enjoy an intense social life. Sea lions are the most agile seals on dry land. Their young are at play, and the males, during heat, engage in an impassioned chase for the females. The young are suckled during their first year of life, even though they are almost independent within a few months of their birth. Only the arrival of a new sibling will finally sever them from the teats of their mother. While birds fly tens or hundreds of kilometers to fish, colonies of sea lions make the most of the crags at the base of the cliffs. Their diving equipment includes big eyes so that they can look downwards where light fades meter by meter. They also have tactile whiskers to sense the rocks when searching for prey. The base of the cliff provides an endless menu. Sea lions do not tend to dive very deep because they look for food close to the surface. The cliffs have an abundance of food, and life there is calm. Perhaps the fact that they are constantly at play is a reflection of their happiness.
down here, each centimeter of rock is very valuable. A tapestry of animals and plants forms a multicolored carpet which covers the rough surface. In this small but varied garden, the competition for light and space is ferocious and silent. attract fish which are experts in living in underwater cliffs with their many caves and hiding places. Plants too play a role in this ecosystem and a very important one, too. Laminary forests are extremely complex ecosystems similar to forests on land. Some laminary forests, with their vast unfurled fringes, can measure more than 30 meters, making them the largest marine plants. This underwater labyrinth provides a safe refuge for the young fish and larvae of the countless marine animals which spend their infancy here. Laminary forests are the front line against the swell and absorb much of its energy before it thrashes against the coast. Laminaries are true allies of the cliffs and their inhabitants. The eternal struggle between the sea and the cliffs is no more than a stormy relationship between water and the land, which inevitably gives rise to a rich and extraordinary wildlife. <laughs> 